In the Moreland side of the family, it was, uh, it was a great time with playing the harmonica. And uh, you and Bill, Uncle Bill, played the harmonica. And you taught me how to play the spoons in a box, and I was, I was pretty darn good. <laughs> and uh, we all got around and had a great time, and, and that put a lot of music in me, and I had a lot of fun with music, and uh, I want to thank you for that. And, you know, I, I was trying to do a little tribute for you. I was going to learn how to play harmonica for you. <laughs> but I figured, you know, it can't be that difficult. <laughs> so I took it up two days ago. <laughs> and I tried. You know, I tried. When, I came, when we came here in the car, we had the flat, so I, I had to drive, because so, I was going to play harmonica in the car to practice. Terry put that flat so Yeah, Terry did the flat so I'd stop playing harmonica, I think. And I figured going 80 miles an hour playing harmonica probably isn't a good idea with a bad tire. So, But I did I did go out and buy this book, Country and Blues Harmonica for the Musically Helpless. <laughs> but it didn't quite didn't quite do it for me. It's 100% klutz certified, but I, I, I couldn't yeah. do it. I tried. I was going to play the harmonica. <laughs> yeah, I could just brought the spoons and I needed yeah. that or a box. But, um... Some of the other memories. Um, <laughs> should I share this one? I don't know. I don't think uh, <laughs> I, I can put it in a certain way. Where I don't put it nicely. Okay. <laughs> Dad, every year we'd, we'd go to, almost every year we'd go to Florida to see Aunt Betsy and see Grandma and Grandpa. And Dan is like every other man, likes to drive for hours and hours and hours <laughs> without stopping to go to the bathroom. <laughs> We were all in the back of the seats, shaking around, dancing, and everything else, trying to, to, to wait to go to the bathroom. So finally, Dad stops. And I remember the, the motel, <laughs> Peter Pan Motel. <laughs> remember? I was about six. Had my little Jerry Mahoney doll. Very happy little guy. Going in this motel. and. One of us, I won't say who, couldn't make it to the bathroom in time. And you remember, I know. But anyway, one of us went in and couldn't make it to the bathroom in time. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> Where's that lead? But the, guy, but the guy came up to get a little cot for me to stay in with me and my Jerry Mahoney doll. And I uh, saw the little accident on the floor when he came in. And Dad said, Oscar couldn't hold it. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> That was one of them. Many stories going to Florida, of course. We won't, we'll share a few of them. Um, the, one th the one time I remember going on my, my scout trip, all dressed up in my, my little scout outfit, ready for a father and son day. Uh, day and we went, and uh, it was you and me, and Mom, and Aunt Mary, and Uncle Bill. <laughs> Always come along. My grandma and grandpa. And then we went, we went to, uh, to go to this place. It was somewhere around Michigan. And of course, Dad being the man that he is, that he doesn't doesn't stop for, for directions, couldn't find the place. So mom says to him, maybe you should pull over and ask where we're going and ask if we can find this place. We're like two hours late now. It's time to step pull over. Dad says, I don't know, I, I'm, I can find it. I can find it. And he had this look on his face like he was determined to find this place. And then all of a sudden his eyes lit up, a big smile came on his face. And all I saw over there was far open. <laughs> So we stopped in there to ask directions, and we never left. I, was like, we, I got a lot of quarters to play uh, play bowling. But, you know, we, so we had a bowling match, father and son bowling match. Mom, can I go play? Another trip to Florida, though. Good memory, though, of course. Um, believe it or not, when I was about Amanda's age, about 11 or 12, we stopped at uh, to Gatlinburg. Yeah, and Anne, Anne got to. She was older, and she got to go up in the in the cable cars and. And believe it or not, I used to throw fits no. and pout it. Diane, remember that trip, Diane? Diane doesn't remember that, no. <laughs> so Dad, Dad took me. Dad took me to Ripley's. Believe it or not, we spent all day there. We spent all day around Gatlinburg, and that was a that was a great memory. Um, when I turned 18, and the drinking law was 18 at that time. I figured since I was the party boy from 14, I figured I could put Dad under the table. So of course we met here at the Legion. Anybody drink half and halves before? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Oh yeah, my, my, my brother's over there. I, I remember during during the wedding, I remember Dad drinking with you guys. Forget about it. Dad, Dad had to take me home and it, was, it wasn't the first time I prayed to the porcelain god, but it definitely was a, a time to remember. The, uh, the music again. One thing that uh, I remember the most about uh, Dad is he loved his toys. He'd come home with, with radios, that God knows what they would do, different frequency things he would say they did, and his scanner radios he'd bring home, and every time Mom would say, what the heck did you buy now? Well, you know, we I inherited that from you, I guess. Because now that's what Terry says to me every time I go home and put something in the studio. I said, so what the heck did you buy now? And then I've, I've got it on tape, too, when Mom said it to me. And, and of course, we all, both of us made excuses for it, too. We never said... We just found it. We found another block, or I'm fixing it for a friend. But uh, anyway, so Dad and I definitely love our toys. Okay. Um, now that I become a parent, of course, there, I find myself saying a lot of the same things you did. Like, uh, you can go blind doing that. <laughs> Do, do I look like I'm stupid? <laughs> that one never worked very good. And leave that alone, you're going to break it, which is kind of the same as the first one. Uh, some of the arguments that we had, uh, of course, you always thought you were right, and I always thought I was right, and of course I had the same ones with my kids, and all I can say is I was right. <laughs> All accounts. Um, oh, another one of your famous savings, sayings was, uh, I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> and the, the one I love, the one that always worked the best for me, that I inherited for you, you never, you never hit me. Let me make sure you know, you never hit me. I tried to look time, but But Dad would be at the table, and if I was misbehaving, he'd say, you! That was it. And that worked for me for at least 18 years anyway. Um, the story, the, this, this is one thing I always wanted to ask you too, and it was a story of my name. Now, when I was growing up, I always, I always hated when people called me Little Oz, Oscar Jr., but I love that name. And I'm very proud that I have that name. And I want to thank you for naming me that, but uh, I heard that there's a there's a story that Ann and Kathy had picked out my name as Stephen James or James Stephen or something like that, right? Oscar Stephen. Oscar, was it Oscar Stephen? Oscar Stephen. Still Oscar. Oh, it was? Yeah, sorry. Oh, well, that, story. so much for that story. <laughs> Throw that one out. Okay, Oscar. I thought it was just because, you know, the guy's going to die and we'll name him Oscar Jr. <laughs> but I guess that's wrong. Okay, we'll forget that one. Anyways, as far as the videotape, if you remember back that far, I called up the leader of the band because, I, like I say, you brought a lot of music to our life, and I'm you know, very happy for that, and a lot of joy in our life, and uh, uh, you've always been there for us, and we love you, I love you, and I think it says it says in the end, I never say I love you enough, and I just wanted to say I love you. Okay.